Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I will show you how to paint a miniature all the way from preparation to finalized product. This is part 8, properly called preparing to paint. So now your miniatures are all properly primed and ready to be painted. So you're probably wondering, what next? Well, the answer is, it's time to paint. But first, here is a quick part of the series dedicated on how to prevent yourself from being bored or giving up really early while painting and stressing out your body and mind unnecessarily. You see, while I love painting and I really enjoy it, many people hate painting and this could be caused by a variety of reasons. The most common I've seen is that they find painting boring or frustrating and as well as stressful both on their minds and their bodies. So this video will be dedicated to showing you some physical and mental preparations which will lead to a much more comfortable, carefree, and efficient working environment and a much better painting experience because all this stuff will lead to a better painted miniature. So first, the physical preparation. What can you do to save your body a lot of stress while painting? Well first, the three most common areas of stress on your body when you're painting are number one, your lungs, number two, your eyes, and number three, your back. So as previously mentioned, the first part of your body that really suffers while painting are your lungs. Remember, we are painting using chemicals. And though most of us tend to use very relatively safe acrylic water-based paints, there are other chemicals around us that can be a little harmful. For example, many of us use mineral spirits or the varnishes or the aerosol cans for primers that we can use while preparing miniatures. And all this stuff can hurt your lungs. To protect your lungs, the easiest way is to simply work in a well-ventilated environment. So keep your windows open, for example, unless it's winter time, then you might want to keep them a little open. But definitely work in a well-ventilated area when possible. Next we have your eyes, which have to focus on the paint job at hand at all times. The easiest way to keep your eyes as focused as possible and not harm them at all while painting is use as much light as possible. So work in bright spaces. For example, if you're working in an average room with an average light mount, feel free to use desk lamps and focus them on the model. That way you can cl see, clearly see the surface and the model. That way, when you hold up the model near the light, you can clearly see the details. And this allows for an easy painting experience, because not only can you see the details, you'll be able to paint them better, and which will result in a much nicer paint job with much less strain on your eyes. And finally, we have your back, which depending on how you sit while you paint, you may cause yourself a lot of back problems. A great way to protect your, your back while well, keeping yourself comfortable while painting is to use a comfortable chair in front of your desk. Now if you're not, if you don't want to use a recliner like I do, feel free to use just a very comfortable ergonomic desk chair. This will protect your back and ensure a relatively comfortable painting experience. Furthermore, while painting in the chair, try to keep yourself relatively upright and paint in a comfortable position. Many painters tend to get themselves into a position when they get hunched over, like this. However, the best option is to keep yourself painting at an eye level in a comfortable straight backed position. That way, your back will be in a correct and comfortable position and you do not put too much strain on it. If you paint hunched over, this will tire out your back relatively quickly. And now that we've got the physical preparations done, it's time to now address the mental preparations. How to mentally prepare yourself to be painting so that you don't get bored or frustrated while painting. 
Organizing your paints is a very easy method to maintain an efficient and easygoing painting environment. This will prevent you from having to constantly look for whichever paint you want, which not only wastes your time, but causes a lot of unnecessary frustration. When painting, I recommend keeping as clutter-free of a work environment as possible. That way, there is very little to get in your way, and you'll always know where everything is on your desk, which will save you a lot, not only a lot of time, but frustration as well. It is always frustrating as a painter when you're looking for a color, or looking for a brush, or anything, and you can't find it on your desk. So maintaining a relatively clean and organized desk will prevent these issues when painting. Another task that I recommend before painting is to give some thought about how you will paint your model and what colors you will require during it. What I like to call your painting method. Another important factor when thinking about your paint job ahead of time is what standard are you going to be painting to? A simple tabletop standard in base involving base colors and such things as dips or shades? Or are you painting to an above tabletop standard? For example, take these two Blood Angel models. The first one on the left was painted using only base colors and a dip. Both of these will be covered in future videos. And you can see it is to a slightly lower standard, but still looks good on the tabletop. Versus the one on the right, which was painted using base colors, individual shades, highlights, and glazes, and is painted to a higher painting standard. And these will also be covered in future videos. So obviously, the one on the left took much less time to paint than the one on the right. So depending on how much time you have, you may want to paint to either standard. Factors when thinking about what paint job to paint to include number one, how much time do you have available? Obviously higher standards take larger amounts of time. Number two, you could think about costs. Typically, Higher paint jobs involve more paints, therefore they might be more expensive. Number three, what model are you painting? If you are painting, for example, a, an orc boy or a Gretchen for an orc army, these guys tend to get lost in the tide of bodies, so you can get away with painting to a slightly lower standard. Versus if you're painting an HQ for, let's say, a Space Marine army that has a lot of detail, you may want to paint to a higher standard since this model will be standing out and will be one of the ones that your opponent looks at the most during the game. Another key aspect to preparing to paint a miniature is what I recommend to do is to separate your paints based on the ones you will need at a time. So keep a minimal amount of paints on the table at a given moment, but you can organize them. If for example I'm painting a space marine, uh, specifically an ultramarine, I can easily know what colors I will be painting in what order, and I can put these on the tabletop in the order in which I'm painting them and remove them as I use them. So first off, I would start off with a base color of Macridge Blue, which will be the foundation color for the Ultramarine. Next, I would probably give it a shading with Drakenhof Nightshade. This will get in the recesses and pro provide some depth of color. Third, I would give it a mid-tone highlight with Altdorf Guard Blue. This will just pick up on the raised areas. Then I would give it a, another highlight, probably an edge highlight with Calgar Blue. And then to tile these blues together, I might decide to give it a Gilliman Blue Glaze. All of these steps will be covered in much depth in future videos. But this is essentially looking at your painting method. If, for example, I line these up on the table, I know exactly what order I will be using them in, I can use the first one and then remove it, the second one and remove it, and so forth. And that way it will keep a very easy progression between colors, you'll never have to look for the next paint, and you'll always know which one you're using next. So it leads to a very comfortable and efficient painting experience. 
Another great piece of advice when painting is to listen to something. This helps remove the monotony of your paint job and task. I personally recommend either listen to music, you can listen to podcasts, or YouTube videos on the same topic. And this does tend to keep things relatively interesting and prevents you from getting bored while painting. So now that we've covered all of the steps to prepare for painting, it is time to start painting. So stay tuned for next part of this series in which we will start base coating our miniatures. Thank you very much for watching. Please like this video, leave comments in the comment section down below, and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. This really does help a lot. Till the next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.